Hey, how's it going? Name's Ouija Dude, and I'll be your host on this most haunted of nights. Happy Hallow's Eve! It's the night where the dead come back to the realm of mortals and harvest the souls of the living. Arrgh, matey! I came back for some beer! Don't mind the drunken pirate skeleton. He was an asshole in life, and he's an asshole in death. Arrgh! Fuck you, matey! I thought I'd take this opportunity to discuss a franchise that features a specter who has haunted my thoughts since my adolescence. Ew. You can burn in hell. Ew. I get no respect around here. None. Heads up, there is spoilers ahead on our dark journey. Continue only if you dare. In October of 2002, I went to a movie with a girl I liked called The Ring. The movie is produced by DreamWorks and stars Naomi Watts as Rachel, a news reporter who stumbles across a cursed VHS tape that gives her seven days before a black-haired ghost girl named Samara comes for her. I was so terrified, I spent the bulk of the movie looking down at the theater floor. After the movie ended, the girl I was with told me it was lame and not scary at all. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally not scary. The reality was the movie haunted me. For weeks after, I kept seeing the black-haired Samara in the dark corners of my house late at night. The way Samara kills her victims in the movie is by climbing out of a well that is in a scene from the VHS tape, then freakishly limps towards the camera, only to crawl out of the television set and kill her mark by some unknown but horrifying means. The victims are found with their faces contorted in unnatural ways. I was so terrified, but also intrigued by the ring. I became obsessed with the movie and discovered it is a Hollywood remake of a Japanese movie called Ringu. I was already big into anime, manga, and even Japanese cinema, so of course I was interested in Ringu. The only thing, this was 2002. We didn't have a whole lot of Japanese movies DVDs here in the States. I had to utilize an ancient evil, an evil that could yield extraordinary treasures or end in devastating ruin. I had to use Kazaa Light. Kazaa Light was a file sharing program that let you borrow files coming from several different sources. You never really knew just where your files were coming from and oftentimes viruses were hidden within. So, I took that risk. Once Ringu finished downloading from Kazaa Light, I watched it late night on Thanksgiving Day 2002. It was even better and more terrifying than its American counterpart. Ringu was a 1998 film produced by Katakawa Shoten Publishing Co. Directed by Hideo Nakata. And starring Nanako Matsushima as protagonist Reiko Asakawa. And Hiroyuki Sanada of the last samurai fame as Ryuji Takayama. The film follows Reiko, a journalist who is researching and reporting on a strange urban legend where a cursed videotape kills people seven days after they watch it. Coincidentally, Reiko's niece dies mysteriously. Upon investigating her niece's room, she discovers an order receipt for developed film. Reiko picks up the photos that were taken by her niece a week prior to her death. The series of pictures show her niece, a boyfriend, and a group of friends together at a cabin. Halfway through the set of the pictures, the group's faces become smudged. Reiko finds out where that cabin is and visits it herself. There, she discovers a seemingly ordinary blank VHS tape. But putting the tape into the VHR, she discovers a morbid short film that shows chaos to a soundtrack that sounds like nails on a chalkboard. 
A man with a sheet over his head, a close-up of a horse's eye, a woman in traditional Japanese clothes combing her hair in a mirror, a sea of human bodies, and it ends with a shot of a well placed in the center of a forest clearing. Reiko is confused to what she sees, but she doesn't have much time to contemplate when the phone to the cabin rings. She answers to hear the screeching sound from the video. Convinced she is cursed and only has seven days to live, Reiko seeks out her ex-husband and father of her son, Ryuji. Ryuji is a psychic who teaches at a university. He is skeptic at first, even watches the video, but as he is sitting at a bench at a park, a strange woman approaches him. He only sees her rotted legs and dirty shoes. As he looks up, there is nothing, but he knows that something is wrong. With time running out, Reiko and Ryuji team up to uncover the secret of the tape. With Ringu, you won't get a lot of jump scares. It is a slow build-up to the ultimate scare, which of course is Sadoko, the Japanese equivalent of Samara clawing her way out of the television set. The long-haired Japanese girl emerging from the TV has since become a horror icon. What Ringu does offer is atmospheric horror. Every scene carries with it a sense of dread, as if something has attached itself to you, and you just can't shake it. It gets even worse when Reiko's young son, Yoichi, watches the goddamn tape because his dead cousin told him to. A lot is left to the imagination, which, in my opinion, is when horror is at its best. We get some insight into who Sadoko was and why her spirit is doing what it is doing, but there are hints that her origins go way deeper and beyond human understanding. Indeed, there are three other movies in the initial series that explore just that. And the resolution to the curse is not a happy one. Nanako Matsushima is outstanding. She has that holy fucking shit look down pat. Just look at how wide her eyes get when she encounters freaky shit. And she is fine. So fine! <gasps> Why fooler? Hiroyuki Sanada is a badass. Plain and simple. Just look at this suave son of a bitch. Look at him. He slaps the shit out of Reiko when she gets all delirious. And of course, we have Sadako. Ah, played by Rie Inu. The number one ghost girl waifu. Sadako is revenge personified. An unstoppable force of hatred. In later sequels, Sadoko is flushed out more and is even a sympathetic character in Ringu Zero, a prequel where Sadoko is the main character. Sadoko even battles out with Kayako, the ghost mama from Juwan, in what looks to be a full-on schlock versus movie in the realm of Freddy vs. Jason, aptly called Sadoko vs. Kayako. But I haven't seen that movie yet. Believe me, it's on my list. Speaking of Ringu sequels, Rosin, the first sequel, was released at the same time as Ringu in an attempt to gain more revenue. It is directed by Yoji Ida and stars Kyochi Sato as Mitsuo Ando. It is based off the book Spiral by Koji Suzuki. Rosin is a very different movie than Ringu. It deals more with the science of the cursed tape and introduces a plot where Sadoko gets reborn as a dual-gendered superhuman creature from the virus on the tape. Wait, <laughs> what the fuck? We leave Reiko for Mitsuo, uh, Ryoji's friend and rival. Really weird shit happens. After Mitsuo watches the tape, Sadoko fucks him? Damn, where were those kinds of tapes when I was growing up? Am I right? Rosin didn't do so hot. I think people were confused with the plot and were like, where's the ghost waifu who comes out of the well? And I get that. I can understand their confusion. Because of the poor sales of Rosin, a replacement sequel was made. Ringu 2 hit Japanese movie theaters in 1999, and though it deviates from the source material, it is much more in line with Ringu than Rosin is. Ringu 2 is directed by Hideo Nakata, the director of Ringu, and stars Miki Nakatani as the film's protagonist, Mai Takano. 
Mai, Ryuji's student and girlfriend, investigates further into Ryuji's death. Of course, the haunted videotape resurfaces, and the threat of Sudoku's vengeful spirit is back in play. Reiko and Yuichi make a return to the film, but sadly, Reiko wasn't around for long before the Reaper finds her. Yoichi even has a crazy telekinetic power and can communicate to Mai mentally. It's up to Mai to protect Yoichi and save them both from Sadoko. Rango 2 has two really cool concepts at work. First off, Mai makes a visit to a friend of Reiko's niece who witnessed Sadoko's ghost murder Reiko's niece. This girl has gone mad and is in a mental asylum, but she gives some startling clues as to what is going on. That and the flashback it shows as she recounts what she saw are creepy as fuck. I love the idea of someone seeing what happened and it makes them go insane. Very Lovecraftian. Secondly, throughout Ringu 2, there is a group of forensic scientists who are modeling the face of Sadoko based off the bones that were found in the well. The face they put together is creepy as all hell and my first time watching the movie I was worried that the face would come to life. It sort of does at the end when Mai comes face to face with Sadoko's ghost. It is a cool and creepy subplot, but Sadoko is shown to have been disformed and ugly, which isn't the case for the fourth and final film I've seen in the franchise, the prequel film Ringu Zero. Ringu Zero was released in 2000. It is directed by Nori Suruta and stars the stunning, beautiful Yuki Nakama as the film's main character, Sadoko Yamamura. That's right, a film all about our well-dwelling, videotape-haunting ghost waifu before she was a ghost, just a misunderstood college girl born of unknown origin and with strange telekinetic powers. Being a very shy girl, Sadoko finally works up the courage to join a drama club even begins a relationship, but as she gains more attention, jealous drama club members hatch plans to sabotage her. When they do, Sadako's full wrath is unleashed, leaving Sadako's father, or perhaps adopted father, no choice but to hurl her into a well and seal her up. Sadako is still alive when he closes the lid. It is a fall from grace story similar to Carrie, Darth Vader, and even Satan's origins from the epic poem Paradise Lost. It generates sympathy for Sadoko, but still keeps her terrifying. She is the offspring of chaos, of the unknown, trying to live in a world that will never understand her. And so, even after death, her curse will burn the world to sunder. All four movies were released in North America on DVD. I have the Ringu Anthology collection right here, and it's a pretty sweet collection. I can confidently recommend Ringu and Ringu Zero as good, creepy horror movies, perfect for a Halloween night. Ringu 2, while okay, still doesn't hit the high notes of the original. And Razin, I can only recommend to the curious filmgoer because <laughs> it is strange and is very different from the rest of the series. The Ringo Anthology is out of print, uh, but for the most of the year, you can nab a used copy on Amazon for about 25 bucks. Around Halloween time though, people try to sell it for like $200. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, don't buy it for $200. A YouTuber who goes by uh, Dare Joker has even uploaded the entire Ringo movie to YouTube. Watch it there before you drop $200. Uh, also, I want to add that it looks like there's a uh, Blu-ray collection coming out pretty soon. Um, I don't know much about it, but it looks like it does have the original four movies on there as well. Uh, two more movies came out later. Uh, Sadoko 3D uh, in 2012 and Sadoko 2 3D. But I haven't seen them and they look like trash. As mentioned before, uh, Sadoko vs... Kyoko uh, came out in 2016. Uh, I would love to see this movie as it looks like total schlock. Interestingly enough, there is a new ring movie titled Sadoko, which was released in Japan this year. Apparently it has to do with someone filming Sadoko murdering a victim and then posting it to YouTube. That seems slightly interesting. 
might have to check it out. Halloween is one of my most favorite times of the year. I hope you all have a good Halloween. Be safe, have fun, don't let the ghost waifu get you. Or do. Peace. Huh. That's kind of weird what's happening to my monitor. Oh god. No. Oh no. Oh no. There's she's coming for me. She's coming. No, no. No, no.